Cattail has a large variety of uses at different times of the year. Its leaves, stalks, roots, the cigar-shaped head, its pollen all have great value to them. The cattail is one of the most important and most common wild food and medicinal plant that can be found easily near lakes, streams, ponds and moist fields. It can be used to heal wounds, stings, bruises and much more. It can be used to make mats, baskets, diapers, mattresses, life jackets, hats, and the list keeps on going. Stay tuned to learn all about cattail in this video. Good morning and welcome to Backyard Garden with Alex Panasol. Today you will learn about cattail, its benefits and how it can help us in our daily life. Welcome to episode 7, part 6 of a 6 part video series. Distinguishing features. You can easily recognize a cattail. It has a brown cigar shaped head that stands atop of a very long stalk. Young shoots first emerge in spring and once fertilized the female flowers transform into familiar brown cigar shaped cigars also called candle wicks that consist of thousands of tiny developing seeds. Flowers. The cattail flowers have two parts a female and a male. The thin yellow spike extending above the female part are the male flowers. Both male and female flowers are visible from May to July. These brown flower heads open in early fall, letting its fluffy seeds to emerge. The cigar-shaped head can be used as packing material as ready to take a spark to start a fire. Even after a very heavy rainfall, they are still ready to take a spark as they are often still dry inside. Dip the head in oil or fat and it becomes a torch. Aboriginals used fluffy wool of the head as diapers because of its softness and absorbency. The fluffy wool is similar to dawn and can be used as insulation in clothing, pillows, mattresses, quilts, and life jackets. The young cattail flowers can be roasted. Mature cigar-shaped heads can be burned from the outside to expose the seed heads to extract the small seeds from the fluff. This method was used by some Indians to make gruels and added to soups. Gruel is a type of cereal. Appearing in midsummer, yellow pollen of the cattail can be added to pancakes for added nutrition. It is easy to shake the pollen into the bag. Several pounds of its pollen can be collected in less than an hour. Use it as a thickener in soups, stews or mix it with flour for some great tasting bread and cattail pancakes. The pollen contains essential fatty acids, calories, and protein. The lower parts of the leaves can be used in salads. The green leaves can be harvested to make strings out of them. Just simply take a hair comb and break the fibers like so. Dry the fibers and braid them into thicker, stronger rope or leave it as is. Dry leaves are not used to make their string or rope as the fibers inside of them are brittle at this point. Inside the stalk of fresh shoots is a tasty food that can be eaten raw, sautéed, tossed in stir-fried or boiled. Young shoots can be prepared just like asparagus or add them to soup towards the end of the cooking. They retain their refreshing crunch. They're superb in stir-fried dishes and excellent in virtually any context. They taste like a mix of cucumber and celery. Overall, a very mild and sweet flavor. The shoots contain vitamin K and B6, minerals such as iron, phosphorus, calcium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, and manganese. In early spring, dig up the roots to locate the small pointed shoots called corms. These can be washed, peeled, and eaten. Add them to other greens for salads, cook in stews, or alone in a herbal pot. Aboriginals used its root to make flour, which is high in protein, carbohydrates, and contains gluten. 
Gluten is the constituent in wheat flour that allows the flour to rise in the yeast breads. Iroquois Indians macerated and boiled the roots to produce a fine syrup, which they used in cornmeal pudding and to sweeten other dishes. There are two ways to make flour from its roots. First way, it can be dried and pounded to make the flour, which is my personally favorite way. Second way, peel the root and wash it in a pot of water. Mash it with your fingers, separating the flour from the fibers. This process doesn't take too long. Discard the fibers and excess water. Dry the flour on the sun, by the fire, in the oven, or use a dehydrator. The dried stalks of the plant can be used as hand drills and arrow shafts. Cattail's medicinal properties are numerous. Please remember to like, subscribe, and press that notification button so you don't miss any of our new videos. A poultice can be made from the split and bruised roots that can be applied directly to cuts, wounds, burns, stings, and bruises. The cattail roots and stem can also be used to reduce fever, increase urine flow, increase lactation, treat dysentery, and diarrhea. The ash of the burnt cattail leaf can be used as an antiseptic or a styptic powder. A small drop of honey-like exertion often found near the base of the plant can be used as an antiseptic for small wounds and toothaches. The jelly between the young leaves is most plentiful in the springtime. It can be used as an itch or pain reliever. It has astringent, coagulant, pain relieving and antiseptic attributes that can slow or stop bleeding, ease pain and help clean wounds or scratches. Used externally, the pollen has an antiagulant effect if it is uncooked. But if you roast it over a fire until it is black, you can use it as a wound dressing to stop the bleeding. You can also cook the pollen in the same manner as you would cook a corn cob and use it in a dressing to stop the bleeding. Internally, the pollen can treat urinary problems, angina, menstrual problems, abdominal pain, tapeworms, vomiting of blood, and internal bleeding. The brown seed dawn of the cattail can be used to treat diaper rash or provide padding for a splint. A word of advice, cattail can promote menstrual bleeding. As such, pregnant women should avoid using it. Cattails perform a filtering function in nature. They remove harmful pollutants from the water. These pollutants are retained in the plant. If you choose to ingest cattail, make sure to select the plants that are in the water where the water is moving around them rather than being stagnant. Ensure that you know how to distinguish the difference between a cattail and other plants that look similar to it before ingesting any part of the plant. Thank you for watching this video to the end as this really helps me how YouTube classifies my video.